Hey, what is going on guys? You are watching Matt the Musketeer and today I have a brand new video for you and as you can see I am playing that Aftermath DLC. Mm -mm -mm. That thing is tasty. This is definitely without a doubt, a shadow of a doubt, the single best DLC they've released for Battlefield 3. I am uh, I'm loving this a lot. This is the first time I've actually uploaded a PC gameplay of this. Obviously my previous gameplay was on the PlayStation 3. I was given it by a friend of mine but this is on the, uh, on the PC. I've actually found it quite hard to have time to play a lot of this with uh, Far Cry and Assassin's Creed and other games. So um, it's not like it's I'm just playing Battlefield anymore. There's quite a lot of other games I'm playing. So, um, you know, fitting the time around to do all of these games and do all these videos for you guys, it's quite difficult. But um, this is one of the uh, one of the better games I had uh, two nights ago, which was actually the first night I got a chance to play um, Aftermath. Obviously, it came out late on PC. So this is me just running around, and I get quite a uh, quite a good little gameplay here. I do a little section uh, about halfway through where I have nothing but the Rex. I'm going absolutely sick with the Rex. It's quite nice. Obviously, this is scavenger mode, which I think is brilliant. I love this game mode now. It puts everyone on an even playing field, and I think it's, uh, it's quality. But today, I'm not actually here to talk to you about Battlefield 3 or Aftermath. I want to talk to you guys about becoming a PC gamer. Now, this is something that I covered on my old channel. I did two videos looking at the pros and cons of PC gaming called Becoming the PC Gamer, the Benefits, and Becoming a PC Gamer, the Cost. And in those two videos, as I said, I was also looking at the pros and cons of PC gaming. And now it's coming towards Christmas. Some of you guys have asked me to cover the idea of becoming a PC gamer on a budget. And if this video goes well and you like it, I might do a second episode called Becoming a PC Gamer on a Premium and look at a more high-end, high-spec computer. Now, in this video, I'm going to be very vague about cost because I know a lot of you guys are in America, some of you guys are in Europe, some of you guys are in Australia, some of you guys are in Thailand, China. So the cost itself um, is very irrelevant because costs will change all over the world. But what I want to do is talk about building things on a budget based on low-end or lower end spec pieces of kit which can still play up to date current games. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've researched a computer that I would build if I set myself an English budget as £700. Now that's the the only figure I'm going to mention in this video that £700 is the budget of this uh, computer which is quite a low end computer for you there but I'm not going to talk about the cost of the individual pieces because as I said that price will vary all over the world. Now in my last Becoming a PC Gamer video, I actually mentioned that one of the positives is you can actually start off by building a more budget PC and over time you can actually save money and then buy extra parts and slowly build up your computer without spending a whole lot of cash in one go and burning a big hole in your wallet. Now one of the other first things I will mention for any of you guys who didn't see my previous episodes of Becoming a PC Gamer is I recommend to save yourself money, always build the computer yourself. Maybe you haven't got the skills or the abilities to do that, but it's very easy online to watch tutorials. And building a computer is very, very simple. It's kind of seen as this taboo thing where people still think building a computer is some kind of rocket science. But with all the tutorials out there, it's very, very simple to build your own PC. And that will save you hundreds of pounds. So this video is based on the idea of you building your own computer. Now, the computer that I have picked the specs for, I have researched and will be able to play all the latest games, Battlefield 3, Far Cry 3. And you'll actually be able to play things like Battlefield 3 in 60 to 70 frames per second and Far Cry in maybe 30 to 40 frames per second. So, games like Far Cry, which are open world and a little bit larger, obviously slowed on the computer a little bit. It does that to my computer, even though mine has, you know, all the state-of-the-art kit in it. It still does have that little bit of effect on your uh, frame rate and stuff, but... For a budget PC, this is still uh, going to play all those top-of-the-range games that you want to play in beautiful, uh, high graphics. Maybe not ultra, but still high, so it'll still look a lot better than it does on console. So I'm going to go through and talk to you guys about the kit that I have picked for this computer. Now, to start off with, I'm going to talk to you guys about, of course, the most important part of the computer, which is the processor. Now, for this computer, I have picked the i5-3450, which runs at 3.1 gigahertz. Now, that is industry standard. Of course, you can overclock your own processor very easily to run at a faster speed. Mine is actually meant to run at 4.7 gigahertz, but I've actually overclocked it to run at 5.3 gigahertz. So, you can always increase the speed of your processor yourself. So, 3.1 is the industry standard for the i5-3450. So, you can make that run quicker yourself. Now, a lot of people don't understand that within the i range, the i3, the i5, the i7, there are then other speeds. There is not just one type of i5 processor. And the 3450 is one of the higher end i5 processors you can get, but it's still quite relatively cheap. So that is the reason that I have picked that processor. Now, secondly, I have picked the Acacia Nero 3 Silent, which is, of course, your CPU. Nothing exciting to talk about there. It's just quite new, relatively cheap, and runs well with gaming. Now, one of the most important things, the most interesting things for you guys to discuss when it comes to PC gaming is, of course, your graphics card. Now, I myself on my computer, I uh, SLI two graphics cards because it was cheaper than buying one upgraded graphics card. I actually run the GTX 560 Ti SLI. SLI, of course, meaning that you are running two of them. 
But for my budget PC, I picked the GeForce GTX 550T, which is a one gigabyte graphics card. Now this still runs Battlefield 3 perfectly on high graphics, as I said, about 60 to 70 frames per second. And what's good about this graphics card is it totals up quite cheap. And because it's quite cheap, you could then easily buy two of these graphics cards and SLI them. Now, SLI and graphics cards is a very good alternative to buying more expensive graphics cards because, for example, for myself, I purchased two and it totaled to about 400 pounds and it was equally then as powerful as one of the, the 600 series, which costs almost 500, 600 pounds. So you save yourself money there if you SLI graphics cards. So that would be my recommendation to get the GTX 550T and then uh, buy two and SLI them. You'll have yourself a very powerful uh, graphics card there for your computer. Now, one of the other most important parts of a PC when it comes to gaming, and actually one of the most relatively cheap, is of course the RAM. Now, my own PC has 12 gigabytes of RAM, and I've never seen a game require that kind of amount of RAM yet, really. Battlefield 3 requires four. Far Cry 3 recommends six, but requires four at minimum. But for this gaming PC, on a budget, I've actually gone for eight gigabytes of RAM. So you've got more than enough RAM there. Now, of course, RAM, if you're doing things like rendering videos or using Photoshop, um, the more RAM you've got, the better, really. It can process the tasks that you want it to much quicker. So uh, the more RAM, the better in a computer, really. And RAM is relatively cheap, as I said. I have 12 in mine. And you can buy four gigabyte uh, sticks of RAM for about 60, 70 pounds. So you can upgrade your RAM at any time. And um, it is relatively cheap. And it can make a real difference. RAM is one of the most noticeable differences in any computer when you upgrade it. So um, eight gigabytes of RAM for this budget PC is still quite high end and will have a great performance for gaming for you there. Now, another important part of any computer is, of course, your motherboard. Now, for this computer, I've actually gone ahead and picked the Asus P8H61MLE. Now, that's quite a mouthful, and if you guys want to buy any of these parts or are interested in looking at any of these parts, I will leave an entire list of all the parts in the description below, so you can copy and paste those straight into Google if you want to buy any of those parts. Feel free to, uh, to do that. Now, the reason I picked this motherboard is because it's quite a state-of-the-art motherboard, but more importantly, it allows you to install lots of sticks of RAM. It allows you to install up to uh, 32 gigabytes of RAM. And obviously, a motherboard that allows you to install all these uh, state-of-the-art pieces of kit is necessary. If you haven't got a, uh, a state-of-the-art motherboard, you won't be able to install multiple graphics cards and lots of, uh, lots of RAM. And of course, it holds your processor. So having a state-of-the-art motherboard is, of course, important to building your gaming PC. Now, to keep this PC within a low budget, I have not installed a solid state drive or potentially installed a solid state drive within this computer. Instead, I've gone for two 500 gigabyte hard drive. Now, this allows you to have 500 gig for your OS and your programs and your games and 500 gig for your videos your photographs and anything else you want to have on your computer now having a solid state drive in a computer really is what starts to define between a budget pc and a premium computer uh, solid state drives are a little bit more expensive but they also let your computer run a lot quicker i have one installed on my computer where i have my os installed i have battlefield installed i have sony vegas installed and then on my other um, two terabyte hard drive that's where i have my videos and all my uh, rendered content for you guys, my pictures and all my uh, old university work and stuff like that. So having a solid state drive is where things start to get a little bit more uh, expensive. So for this budget PC, we do not have a solid state drive installed. Finally, of course, the operating system. I have picked the 64-bit version of Windows 7. And the reason for this is now Windows 8 is out. It makes Windows 7 relatively cheap and it keeps it within our low budget. Now, within this budget, I've actually set aside some money to count for a case. Now, of course, I'm not going to talk to you guys about cases because cases are just down to your personal opinion. Of course, you must buy a big enough case to fit your Asus motherboard in. Cases come in different sizes dependent on different size motherboards. So as long as you buy a case that can fit your Asus motherboard in, then everything's, uh, everything's fine and dandy. Now, the only things I haven't covered for in this video are, of course, your peripherals like your keyboard, your mouse, and your monitor, and your speakers. But as I said, this video is just talking about the cost of building the PC itself. If you are interested in looking at any of the parts I have talked about in this video, I've left a list of them in the description below. So go ahead and look at those and copy them into Google if you want. And if you have any more questions about becoming a PC gamer or building a PC, feel free to throw them in the comment section below. I'll try and answer as many as possible. And if you like this video, guys, please give me a like. It helps me out a lot. And if you want to see me do a premium PC build setup, then tell me in the description below. But in the meantime, guys, thank you for watching and I will see you soon.